Today marks the beginning of the church year and the beginning of the season of Advent. Advent is a time of preparation for each member of the church, as well as for the whole church family. We prepare for the coming of the Christ child, but we are also reminded of the need to prepare for the second coming of Christ, when he will establish his kingdom of love, justice, and mercy. The Advent wreath has become a symbol of hope as we wait for Christ to come. Its round shape, as well as the use of evergreens, reminds us of God's never-ending love for us. The candles remind us of God's promises. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope. It reminds us of our hope for the coming of God's kingdom into the world. Listen to these words from the prophet Isaiah. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We light this first candle as a symbol of hope in a dark world. Let us stand and pray the prayer of adoration printed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, through long generations, prepared a way for the coming of your Son and by your Spirit, you still bring life to the that we may welcome Christ to rule our thoughts and claim our love as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, to whom be glory always. Amen.
You may be seated. Friends, scripture, scripture teaches us that the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Trusting in God's promise in the Spirit, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Anxiously we wait, O God. The world around us is in turmoil, and people see signs of destruction at every turn. But you have called us to lift our heads and wait with hopeful expectation for the day of your coming. We must confess that all too often we let our fears overwhelm us and our hope turns to despair. Forgive us, Lord, for letting fear displace our faith. Renew in us a sense of eager expectation for the day of your coming. Amen. Hear now the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As forgiven people, we are given guidance for living for the, our Lord Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Friends, in Jesus Christ, we have been reconciled to God. In Christ, we have been reconciled to one another. Indeed, Christ has entrusted to us the ministry of reconciliation. Let us celebrate this ministry of reconciliation by passing the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Grace, mercy, and peace unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, on behalf of the officers of the congregation, the elders and deacons, I bid all who are worshiping here this morning a warm word of welcome. It is good to have this family of God joined together once again, both here in this place and by webcast. 
If you are visiting with us, whether here or by webcast, especially from out of town, we extend to you the invitation to treat this as your own church whenever you find yourself in Tyler. On the other hand, if you live in or near Tyler or you're looking for a church home, whether here or, again, by webcast, we extend to you the invitation to join us in membership. We'd love to have you as part of this household of faith. If you'd like to learn more about how to become active and involved in the life of this church, if you'd like to learn how to plug in, if you'd like to learn how to join, uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, you may indicate that interest in the friendship pads as they're passed, um, and uh, we will follow up with that. Or you can uh, go to our uh, webpage, fpctyler.com, where you'll find a whole raft of information. Uh, failing that, um, if you want information that you can't find in, in from there, uh, simply email us, church at fpctyler.com, and we'd love to get back with you and uh, let you know how you can plug in and how you can become a part of First Presbyterian Church. And if you are here in the sanctuary, uh, it is time to pass the friendship pads, if you wouldn't mind. If you're seated closest to the center aisle, if you would find that friendship pad and fill it out, pass it to the end of the pew and then back again so that everyone has a chance to register his or her presence. It's a big help for us. And if you're a visitor and don't mind, we'd love to have not only your name, but your address, phone number, email. We simply would like to have the opportunity to contact you in days ahead just to let you know how glad we are that you're here with us today. The session met briefly before <clears throat> worship this morning and received a new member into the church, and I'd like to introduce her to you now. Her name is Aline Heiser. Aline is sitting in the Amen section, way back on the back pew, or a ah, second from the back. Uh, where she sits with a, a pretty fair number of suspect people, but we're, we, uh, we welcome her anyway. She has already plugged in uh, uh, to the life of the church. She's a part of the Thursday morning Bible study. <clears throat> and I think she said that uh, some of the folks in the Bible study, uh, she was going to wait a little while longer. She's been with us for, I don't know, six, eight months, and she was going to wait a little while longer before joining. And they just said, why are you going to wait? Just do it now. So here she is. And Aline, we're glad that you're with us. Let us now continue in our worship as we attend to the ministry of the Word. Let me invite the children of the congregation uh, to go with Casey Johnson for Children's Church. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 33, reading verses 14 through 16. The prophet speaks of a righteous branch from David. Listen for the word of God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, reading verses 9 through 13. Paul expresses his hope that the faith of the church in Thessalonica will be strengthened in preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ. Listen for the word of God. 
How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may, we, and may we so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. The reading from the Gospel this morning comes to us from the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, beginning to read at the 25th verse. You will recognize these verses as, you may not know them by this name, but they are part of what's called the Little Apocalypse as it's found in Luke. It is a part of a lengthier discourse in which Jesus prepares his disciples for what is to come. Listen then for the Word of God. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. 
Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Open our eyes now that we may see clearly the path that you've laid out for us. Open our ears that we may hear your word to us this day as you call us to follow you on that path. Open our hearts that with joy and expectation we may follow wherever you lead us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be fully acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've gotten to that certain age in life, and I think many of you will recognize it when I say it. Somebody will say, do you remember a couple of weeks ago we did such and so? And of course, I have maybe a vague recollection of the congregation, of the con conversation, or the event, and so my stock answer is becoming, I have a vague memory of that, but you know I've slept since then, and I just don't quite remember. I, that really sums it up for a lot of us. We, we sleep from time to time, and in our sleep we forget things that have gone on. But the other thing that happens when we sleep is the world moves on without us. Things take place in our own land, in our own city, and around the world, and we wake up and we might read about it in the newspaper or watch it on the news or see some feed um, on, on Facebook or something like that, but it will catch us by surprise. It's because things go on about which we are totally and completely unaware. Things happen while we sleep. The same thing happens in the kingdom of heaven. It is, the kingdom of heaven is as though we were asleep. Now, it's not that we are always asleep. We're up and about and doing the usual things that we do in life. We get up, we go to work, we make coffee, we uh, maybe go to school, maybe go visit friends, go out and volunteer. Whatever it is that we do when we get up during the day occupies our mind and our attention. And that becomes, in a very real sense, our reality. Whatever is going on in our lives is the center of our very reality, our very being. And we forget there are things going on around us that we have nothing to do with. The kingdom of heaven is in many respects that way. It is hidden from us. And what is going on with the kingdom it are things that we simply cannot see and cannot witness. That's what Jesus is really trying to tell his apostles and his disciples that the kingdom is moving forward, things are happening, only we don't see it. All we can catch are signs now and again. You heard me when I introduced this passage from Luke, call it the little apocalypse. The very word, the very name apocalypse is often enough to raise the hair on the back of of our necks, it gives us a slightly queasy, uneasy feeling because it's kind of, you know, end of the world stuff. But really the word apocalypse doesn't mean end of the world at all. The word apocalypse is a Greek word. It really means a revelation. Or even more than that, it means a glimpse, a parting of the curtains to see something of the reality that is going on that is simply hidden from the eyes of most ordinary human beings. 
That's what Jesus is giving us here. It's kind of, he says there is stuff going on in the kingdom about which we are not particularly aware, but know that it's happening. And when the kingdom comes, there will be just a few signs to let us know that it's coming. But behind that curtain, where the kingdom is being formed, things are happening, and things are happening all the time. Not bad things, good things. It means that the kingdom of God is about to appear in our world in a very real and tangible way. We just can't see it. It is as though we were asleep all the time while this is going on behind the curtain. The problem is we get so caught up with the stuff happening in our world. We listen to some of those verses as we read from Mark the other week where we see wars and rumors of wars. We see all of these these terrible, awful things, and it makes us afraid. It makes us frightened about the coming kingdom. It's why the word apocalypse has gotten such a bad rap in our imagination. It's because we think the end is all about bad stuff, but it's not. The end is not the end. The end is purpose. It is why we are here. It is what the kingdom is all about. But when we get caught up in all of the goings-on in our world, when we get caught up in the, the disagreements, when we get caught up with the conflicts of the world, and when we get caught up with naming some other group as the, as the bad, evil group, and our people are the good people, then we begin to fall asleep and fail to pay attention to the reality of the kingdom that is taking place in our midst. We very much, in a real sense, let our fears overtake us and our fears displace our faith. So where do we see the kingdom? Is it even possible to see the kingdom in our world and in our midst? And I want to tell you, yes, it is. It is possible to see little glimpses of the kingdom even right now, even here in this place. I see the kingdom displayed before me every time I see one of you do a silent, small, little unannounced kindness that you think nobody is seeing, that nobody is watching. But I'm watching sometimes, and I know sometimes other people are watching. And when we see those little kindnesses, those little unforced kindnesses, things that we don't expect a reward for, that's a, that's a sign of God's kingdom in our midst. And you didn't even know that you were the bearer of the sign of the coming kingdom. I see the coming kingdom when I hear our voices raised in song and praise each and every Sunday morning. It is a glimpse, it is an, an oral sign of the coming kingdom. And it, it is just a portion of the heavenly choirs that sing to God each and every day. We simply do our little, little bitty part in raising our voices in praise, but it is a sign of the coming kingdom of God, of the kingdom where the angels and the cherubim and the saints who have gone before all gather before the throne and sing praises to God. Yeah, it's a sign of the kingdom when we gather here in this room. I see signs of the kingdom when I see people teach children and youth, children and youth who might want to be somewhere else, but you, you have infinite patience and infinite love for these younger ones in our midst. And with that patience and forbearance, you teach and pass along this fragile faith that belongs to us, that is our inheritance. That's a sign of the coming kingdom. Advent, as you know, is a time of preparation. It's a time of waiting. 
every time Advent starts, I'm, I, it always catches me a little unawares. And I, after this many years of preaching the gospel, I don't know why it still does. But this first Sunday of Advent, the gospel reading is always about this coming kingdom. And it's always a little mysterious and a little mystical because it's a reminder that we are not quite there yet. We live in kind of the between times. Christ having come once is going to come again and we, we're in the middle. We come at this point waiting and expecting Christmas Day, that day when we'll gather perhaps with family or friends and we'll eat a meal. Perhaps we'll share presents under a Christmas tree and we'll think that that's, that's what it's about. But those of you in this room and joining us by webcast, you know that that's not what Christmas is really all about. Christmas is all about celebrating the coming of the Christ child so many years ago, and it is about celebrating the fact that the Christ will come again. That's what Advent is about. It's about teaching us and training our hearts to be prepared for that coming kingdom so that we're not caught asleep and unawares. We're not caught up with the cares of the world so completely and so fully that when the kingdom comes, we miss it altogether. The signs are there. They may not be the mystical signs. If you're looking for shooting stars and things like that, that's not really what to look for. It's to look for the common things, the common things that happen every day in our midst, the common things that take place in this room and with this people and with countless other congregations and peoples around the world. Friends, the kingdom is coming. That much we know. When it will be fully revealed, this much we do not know. But we know this. The signs are there. If only we dare to look for them and believe. Thanks be to God, who is even now preparing us for this great coming kingdom. To him be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen. Let us say now what we believe, using these words from a declaration of faith. Let us stand together. Jesus, the long-expected Savior, came into the world as a child, descended from David, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Mary, a virgin. He lived as a Jew among Jews. He announced to his people the coming of God's kingdom of justice and peace on earth. We affirm that Jesus was born of a woman, as is every child, yet born of God's power as was no other child. In the person and work of Jesus, God himself and a human being are united, but not confused, distinguished, but not separated. Amen. Through birth, life, death, and resurrection, he brings the resurrection between God and humanity that God always intended.
Lift up your hearts. Give to the Lord glory and praise. God of wonder and awe, as we watch for your signs and sun, moon, and stars, we pray with all our heart and mind, saying, Lord, in your mercy, for the church that watches and waits for you, for those who seek or lead or follow, that the path be made straight for your coming. Lord, in your mercy, for our nation as it seeks peace and justice, that a spirit of mutual respect may inform and instruct those who share power with those they pledge to serve. Lord, in your mercy, for the welfare of the whole world, that we might hold whatever is true and honorable, just or pure or pleasing in our hearts, joyfully living your vision for all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, for this community, that our love may grow with knowledge and insight as we discern the gifts and the challenges of the community around us. Lord, in your mercy, for all who suffer, that we may share in their suffering and honor their presence with us as we ask for your healing touch. We remember those who have requested our prayers and those known to us who are in need of your care, solace, and mercy. Don, Bob, Casey, Oveta, Sophie, Lisa on the death of her father, the family of Carter Gabriel on his death, and the family of Herman Cryer on his death. Lord, in your mercy, Creator God, we praise you for your love and coming to us. Give us grace to accept the Christ who comes in your name and the courage to be Christ for others. This we ask in the name of him who came to us as an infant and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Let us bring to God our tithes and our offerings.
Let's pray. We thank you, O Lord, for all your tender mercies. Receive these gifts we offer. Use them for the building of your kingdom and to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Friends, go forth now from this place, refreshed, restored, renewed. Go forth from this place, looking for signs of the kingdom, for they are there, if only you will look. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.